I recently held a funeral for all of my dead houseplants this year. Plant friends, you heard me right. (laughs) Dead houseplants. I, Maria, the host of this podcast, cheering you all on in your houseplant journeys, had a lot of dead houseplants this year. (laughs) And here's the thing, plant friends, I'm not making it mean anything about me. And here's another thing, plant friends, some of those plants weren't even fully dead yet. They just weren't bringing me joy and I was ready to let go of them. And I took it upon myself to say goodbye to them in an empowered way that released me of guilt that I was carrying around. I'm not going to say it was easy. Some of the plants that I had to let go of were heartbreaking because of the connections that they reminded me of different people, you know, plants that listeners had given me one of my first plants that I ever had, they had real memories associated with them. And normally, I would let those memories guilt me into trying to resuscitate the plant or to really beating myself up over that plant. And I didn't have an excuse that the heat turned on and I didn't know and it blasted all my plants and killed it or I was gone and my heat turned off and all my houseplants froze. I didn't have an excuse like that. My excuse was that life got really hard this year. I got thrown some serious curveballs this year where all of a sudden, even if I wanted them to be, my large collection of houseplants could no longer be the full priority of my life. So I did one of the best things I did for myself all year, which was perform a plant audit where I went through my entire collection, I assessed which plants deserve to stay and which plants I was ready to leave. And I let them go in a beautiful ritual that allowed me to release my guilt and create more space in my life for joy and maybe even more plants. This is a taboo subject in the plant world, but I am committed to staying real with you, (laughs) to being honest with you, even if it embarrassingly requires me telling you about the plants I've killed. So buckled up, this is a real and raw review of my plant audit in hopes that if you are in a place in life that you need to perform your own plant audit, I hope this episode empowers you to do so and helps you grow more joy in 2024. Welcome to the Growing Joy podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives. I'm Maria, author of Growing Joy, the Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, an epic plant killer turned happy plant lady. On Growing Joy, you'll find conversations about plant care, plant community, and wellness through the lens of plants. Hello, plant friends. Welcome. Welcome. If you're new here, I'm Maria. I'm the host of the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, and I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and grow more joy in your life. Keyword successful here, even though I'm talking about my plant failures this year. Um, And if you're a returning listener, hello. Thank you so much for returning and spending some time with me and allowing myself to just spill my own tea. (laughs) I guess if you put it that way. It's the last episode of 2023. My what a year it has been. What a surprise it has been. And I try and use the last episode of every year to get a little bit reflective and also to like vulnerably clue the audience in on stuff that they might not be aware of. Last year, it was an episode with my business coach about how I built the business and the inspiration behind the rebrand. And this year, it's just telling you about some stuff that happened to me this year in life and why it kind of had me be unattentive to a bunch of plants and why I held a funeral for all of them. So we're celebrating plant losses together. Okay, no more guilt. Life is too short. I'm not feeling guilty about what happened. I'm celebrating the fact that I created this plant audit (laughs) that I hope you use too, should you need it. So I want to read you a very short snippet of my book that pertains to plant death. In my book, Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Happiness, I have an entire chapter on the dark side of plant care because I think it's not talked about enough when we kill a plant, the guilt that we associate with ourselves, the, the sadness, right? And how to kind of cope through sometimes the overwhelm, right? There's so many different seasons of plant parenthood. Some of them are dark and I wanted to kind of shed light on that. So This is a very short snippet on plant death. So if you've had a plant death, you are at an important crossroads plant friend. You can choose to let this plant death empower you or defeat you. It's up to you and it's really that simple. You've got two options. 
Option A, you let the plant death confirm your sneaking suspicion that you suck and will never be good at anything and you give up. You label yourself a plant killer and anecdotally joke about your plant fails while you admire someone's plant collection at a party and just stick with cut flowers in your home. I chose option A for the first decade of adulthood and it sucked. I look back to those years and think about what my life might have been like if I had simply made the shift to option B earlier and experienced the joy from plants that is so integral to my existence now. But enough about me. Option B, hint, pick this one. You allow this plant death to make you curious and help you grow into a better plant parent. If something dies, ask yourself, hmm, what happened there? Check the roots. Did you accidentally overwater? Maybe you need to scale back on your watering. Check the leaves for pests. Identify whatever little bugger wreaked havoc on your plant. Research the shit out of it and be prepared for next time. Maybe you realize that your plants don't thrive in a certain location because you didn't you don't pass it often enough to remember to water the plants there. Maybe you become a better, wiser plant parent because of the lessons you learn and the research you do, all because this one plant perished. Let's reframe plant deaths as a tremendously helpful part of plant care instead of failure. So with that as our kind of framework for how we're going to dive into this episode, no more shame. We can honor shame when it comes up, but plant death is truly, or plants that aren't doing well, or noticing that you have guilt and discomfort around your plant collection can either be something that totally ruins this hobby for you or the thing that allows you to invite even more joy into this hobby because you just take some steps towards rectifying it, right? So I've written out a bunch of steps for how to perform your plant audit, but I did want to give some context to why I had such a dramatic plant loss this year. I mentioned it once or twice on the podcast. If you follow me on social media at Growing Joy with Maria, you would have been following this journey. I got diagnosed with melanoma in the middle of the summer this year, plant friends. I'm 34. I had no family history. I went into a doctor's appointment thinking I had melasma. I came out with a skin cancer diagnosis. It knocked me on my ass. I was completely shocked. And all of a sudden, my summer, which I had plans on a 25 grow bag garden and all this fun stuff that I was going to do in my garden and with my house plants came to a halt because I was like confronted with the C word, right? All of a sudden, I was making doctor's appointments with surgical oncologists and I was commuting to New York City to meet with my doctors and I was getting surgery and a huge part of my face cut open. By the way, I have clean margins. It was a complete success. I cannot believe how lucky I got. But my summer took a turn that I could have never expected. And because of that, I had to prioritize taking care of myself. And I was super distracted. And because of that, I wasn't able to do my plant care as much as I normally would. Even as seven years in professional plant lady, right? I still wasn't able to keep up with the plant care of my collection. I hear this story a lot in our community, whether it's that you have a kid and all of a sudden your priorities change, or if, you know, in the summer, it's harder for you to care for your plants than in the winter when your kids are at school, whether you have a loss in your family, whether you move and you have to adjust to an entirely new climate. We go through seasons just like our plants, and it is totally okay to reassess our plant collection and figure out, does this bring me joy in this season of my life? In the pandemic, 200 houseplants might have brought you so much joy and relief when we were all stuck inside. Now that the world has opened back up, it's a worthy question to ask myself, do I still have time to care for these 200 houseplants successfully? Or do I have to kind of cull and scale it back in order so, in order to still enjoy this hobby and not feel completely overwhelmed by it? You are so worthy of determining that you do not have to feel guilty about feeling like your plant collection looked a certain way and now you have to maintain it. I give you a permission slip to allow your plant collection to ebb and flow and bloom and grow and change as much as you will in your lifetime. So life got in the way for me. I got the melanoma diagnosis. Then this fall, I had so much crazy travel. I had amazing opportunities come up for my business. It was a crazy year. And so because of that, you know, a bunch of my plants weren't happy. I also had a lot of cuttings of plants that just like didn't really get to establish. And every time I looked at the plants, I was just like feeling so guilty. And the reason why I have these plants is to have them help me be happy. It's a hobby, right? It's, it's supposed to be fun. And I'm supposed to feel inspired by them. And instead, I was feeling so run down and disappointed in myself. And I realized I didn't want to feel that way. And so I decided, okay, we're going to readjust. We're going to let some plants go, even if it hurts, even if I feel guilty. Particularly, I have one amazing listener, Marcia. If you're listening, Marcia, it's about time I told you this, but she had sent me like amazing cuttings of Hoya varieties, probably 
a year ago. And I potted them all up and they were in my office and they were so amazing. And because I didn't have the time to tend to them, they were in my office. I recovered from my surgery for three weeks outside of my office. A lot of them perished. I still have a few of them, but a lot of them didn't make it. And I had such guilt because Marcia, this listener, she's an incredible listener. She's an incredible friend. I got to meet up with her when I was in Vegas. She's been an OG listener from the beginning. Like it's so special to me that she thought to take the time to package those cuttings of these rare Hoyas to me. Plan friends, if you loved my book, Growing Joy, you're going to love the new book, Verdura, Living a Garden Life, which celebrates the power of adding more green to your life with 30 simple and budget-friendly gardening projects that promote well-being through plants. Verdura means greenery in Spanish, but it also refers to any edible plant from the garden. It's written by Perla Sofia Curbelo Santiago. She's amazing. I follow her on Instagram. And to her, this book is a description and an aspiration. It's about adding more verdura to your daily life. Perla is a Puerto Rican author and gardening celebrity behind Agro Chic. And she's put together this adorable book that has plant projects, like creating a container planning that appeals to the 13-year-old version of yourself, making a meditation garden or a private healing nook, planting a barefoot garden, or even learning to pile a garden entertainment kit. You're gonna have to get the book to realize what that means. Green up your life to reduce stress and add some joy with help from Verdura, available January 2nd, but you can pre-order it now and pre-orders mean so much for book success. And you can pre-order at your local bookstore, bookshop.org, Barnes Noble, or amazon.com. That's Verdura, Living a Garden Life by Perla Sofia Curbelo Santiago, wherever books are sold. If you want to have success with houseplants, you have to have two things, the knowledge to care for them successfully, which you learn on this podcast and healthy plants. That's why I am so excited to introduce you to my new favorite houseplant grower and the plant tag that I look for at the garden center, Proven Winners, Leaf Joy. Leaf Joy and Growing Joy. Are you kidding me with this partnership? So obsessed. Proven Winners Leaf Joy is setting the standard for houseplant cultivation plant friends. I just got back from visiting their greenhouses. I was so blown away. They're growing the best quality plant genetics in the -the state-of-the-art fancy European greenhouse. This greenhouse is filled with every plant your heart could ever desire. Monstera Thai constellation, philodendron, alocasia, pink plants, green plants, variegated plants. They have everything. And if they're not already growing it, they'll probably be growing it soon because they are changing the way houseplants are grown. I also love that they have the plant Latin scientific names on their plant ID cards, and also they give you plant care instructions. And if you struggle with picking out what plant is right for your environment, they take the guesswork out of it with this color-coded collections inspired by different areas of your home. They have a collection of plants they recommend for highlight plants, for low-light plants, for small spaces, and even humid environments. So find plant joy with leaf joy. Next time you're at your favorite garden center, look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy plant tags. You will not be disappointed in the variety and quality that they have, plant friends. I'm looking at my Thai constellation I got from them and I'm just like dying. It is so gorgeous, throwing off so many new leaves. So head to provenwinners.com to find your local Leaf Joy dealer and let me know which plant you take home. Marcia is a mother. Marcia is gonna be the first person to understand that life got in the way and I wasn't able to successfully care for the cuttings that she sent me. And I think she's still going to love me, even though I killed some of her cuttings. I'm pretty confident in that, right? And so that's just an example of how you can reframe the guilt that you're going to have versus, you know, the reframing and the grace that you can give yourself. Also, Marcia, I love you. (laughs) So I wanted to walk you through The steps that I took, because this was actually a very intentional practice, and I think there's a really beautiful way that you can do this and almost create some ceremony around it, um, that I invite you to take if you are in a season of life that you need to do this. You can do this practice that I talk about and not get rid of one plant, right? You can do this practice and actually be like, you know what? I don't have enough plants. I actually think I'm ready to add to my collection. Or you could do this practice and realize, yeah, my intuition was right. It's time to get rid of some plants. Let's go. So here are the steps. One, step number one is I encourage you to give yourself a nice, decent chunk of time. Your intuition is gonna tell you what time this is. It's gonna depend on how large your plant collection is. I had 80 plants. I took 45 minutes to an hour to do this. 
Do you have larger plant? If you have a larger amount of plants, you might need more time. If you have a fewer amount of plants, you might need less time. But also remember that you need to visit all the plants in all the rooms in your house. So I have plants in four different rooms in my house. So it took an hour because it took me about 15 minutes with each, you know, each room filled with plants. I would suggest picking some music that you like. It could either be like hype up music or it could be kind of relaxing music just to kind of get you in a nice headspace. If there's a song that you like to listen to that like drops you into gratitude, I would listen to that song before you start. And then also you need to create some sort of space that you're going to bring plants to. So for me, it was my kitchen table, but you have to clear some space on some sort of table that you're going to bring your questionable plants to. All right, so you've given yourself some time, you're playing your music, you maybe lit a candle, lit some sage, you get the vibes right. And now we're going to perform the audit itself. So this is when you're going to walk through your entire plant collection and you are going to physically touch a leaf of each plant. If you have 200 plants, you're touching leaves of 200 plants. And if you can't touch some of them because they're too high up, you're going to spend five seconds or maybe 15 seconds of intentional time looking at that one plant. Because I know sometimes when you have a large collection, it's easier to just see like a shelf of plants instead of individual plants. So you're going to put your hand on the plant, on the leaf or on the pot, put your finger in the soil, and you're going to take a nice look at that plant. You're going to take a deep breath in and an exhale, and you're going to ask yourself, what's the first emotion that comes up about this plant? Is it joy? Is it a fond memory? Is it guilt? Is it shame? Or is it neutrality, right? Neutrality is fine too. Like you might have some plants that you're like, it's a plant. I don't care, right? If the feeling is guilt or shame, or anything negative, anything under neutral, you're going to put that plant on the table. If the feeling is neutrality, you're also going to put that plant on the table because you're going to have perspective. So you're going to revisit the neutral plants just to make sure. And if the feeling is joy or anything above that feeling of neutrality, you're going to thank the plant, give it a little smile and put it back. You're going to go through your entire plant collection, holding the plant, taking a deep breath with each plant, figuring out what emotion rises up and then sorting them accordingly. After you've gone through all of this, you're going to go to your table that has your, you know, pile or your collection of neutral plants and your collection of guilt, shame, negative feeling plants. Now we're going to revisit the neutral plants and you're going to do it again with the neutral plants. And this is where you're just going to make sure now that you've spent time with every single plant in your collection, you're going to revisit these plants and you're going to really take a look at them and say, okay, do I feel neutral about this plant? Or is this a plant that like I could really do without? Maybe because it's a healthy plant, you give it to a friend or you give it to a local nursing home. You know, you don't just compost it or, you know, get rid of it. But this is really your opportunity to be like, you could decide that you only want plants that have special memories or that bring you joy, that bring you that positive feeling. Or this is where you decide, okay, no neutrality, but I really like where this plant is. So you, you do the practice again with the neutral plants. You decide if you have to move anything into the negative pile or that plant gets to get put back. And then you find yourself with your negative pile. Here we go. This is where the real work is done. And this is where a little bit of ceremony, I think, really helps. So we're going to let go of these plants that are no longer bringing us joy. We're going to let go of these plants that are no longer happy in our home. But before we let them go, we're going to do a very short gratitude ritual with them. There was a point when you brought this plant home. So you take one of the plants and you look at it. There was a point when you brought this plant home and it brought you so much joy, right? Whether it was that first feeling when you brought it back from the garden center, whether it was gifted to you by a special person, whether you got it for yourself as a reward for something, there's a myriad of reasons, whether it was the first leaf that unfurled for you, right? There's a myriad of reasons why you might love that plant. You have to go back and remember the time that that plant brought you joy and thank the plant for that moment, okay? I'm pulling this right out of Marie Kondo's book. (laughs) Love Spark Joy. Thank the plant for the memories that that plant has given you and put it back down. You're going to go through all of your plants and you're going to have that special memory and then you're going to put them back down. After you have this gratitude ritual with all of your plants, it's time to be able to let them go. Because although they gave you those positive memories way back when, they're not giving you positive experiences in your nervous system now. And the reason why we have plants is to regulate our nervous systems and help us feel happy and calm, right? So you don't want anything disrupting that. So there are a couple of ways to get rid of your plants. I always recommend trying to find like the highest vibe way of doing so. For me, I have the Lomi, the tabletop composter. So I took the plants, I put them in my composter. I have an Instagram reel about this. I'll put in the show notes. 
I took the plants, I composted them in my loamy. The loamy turns the plants into soil. I can use that soil for further house plants. So it's this beautiful cyclical experience, right? Before I had my loamy, I would just put the plants in my local forest. And I knew that the plants would decompose in the forest and they would turn into nutrients that fed the local fauna and flora. Like I said before, if they're healthy, you can look about passing them off to a friend who they might love and enjoy, right? Or maybe to a local nursing home or a hospital if they accept plants There's or a library, right? There's probably some place that's going to take your free plant with open arms. But I would say try and do it in the way that is the most meaningful. And frankly, plant friend, if tossing them in the garbage is the only way to do it, I give you a permission slip to do that as well. <laughs> now, after doing this audit, I just feel like it's important to let you know you're still a good person. You're still a worthy plant parent. You're still a great plant parent. We all make mistakes. I am seven years into this. I am a professional plant lady podcaster. I have had hundreds and hundreds of plants in the last seven years. My collection has been up to 150 houseplants at one time. It's been as low as 60 houseplants at one time. My collection has ebbed and flowed just like I have, and it is okay. And I just want to let you know it is okay. It is okay for it to, to come and go just like you, right? Our plant collections have seasons just like we do, just like our plants do. And of course, because we talk about plant life parallels, how do I not encourage you to also do a life audit, right? <laughs> As you're culling your plants, can you cull something in your life? Is there a figurative, you know, struggling plant of your life, whether it's a toxic person, whether it's a habit or a behavior, whether it's a job, whether it's, I don't know, is there something in your life that needs to be culled that you're feeling shame about? And can you use this episode as your permission slip to do a little life audit alongside your plant audit? Please let me know how this turns out for you guys, plant friends. I hope it was helpful and supportive. I get so reflective and emotional this time of year. Thank you for processing this with me. I love you. <laughs> I hope we've had a great year together. We have some very exciting additions to the Growing Joy Media coming in 2024. I am also culling parts of my business right now that you'll find out about in January of 2024. I'm doing my own edit of my business but it is all in service to helping this community successfully care for plants and grow more joy in your lives. I pinch myself on a daily basis that I get to do this for you full time. It is so much fun. I love hearing from you all. Please DM me, email me, Maria at growingjoywithmaria.com. DM me, growingjoywithmaria on socials. I wanna hear from you. I'm scheduling content for next year. Let me know what episodes you want episodes on. We're doing YouTube next year. Let me know what video tutorials you need. Let me know how I can support you and be a part of your plant parent journey because that's what I'm here to do. I love you, plant friends. Happy new year. And until next time, keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like what you heard, make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss an episode. We have incredible episodes lined up in 2023 and I don't want you to miss one topic. And while you're subscribing, would you mind clicking over to the review section and leaving us a review? Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast. So I thank you in advance for helping this podcast reach as many planty earbuds as possible across the globe. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got a ton of free options for you. First, there's the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's so fun. It takes literally three minutes to complete. You take the test, you get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you, inspired by your results. The link is in the show notes. Make sure to let me know what your personality is after you take the test. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, check out my website. We've got a bunch of free guides that you can download on topics like understanding natural light, which is actually a three-day worksheet, and nine ways to clean up your office if you need to bring a little bit of planty joy into your work life. And finally, I want to invite you to join the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet, my online garden society. It's both a web platform and an iOS and Android app. It allows our listeners to get together in an algorithm and troll-free online space to swap plant care tips, humble brag about plant wins, and get support when you have plant fails. We have monthly live planty show and tells on Zoom, which are so fun, and even have a living library of planty book recommendations sourced from our community. You can go to jointhegardensociety.com to grab your membership. 
And for anything else, plant friend, I am here for you. Feel free to drop me a line, whether you have an idea for an episode, an event, or maybe you're even a planty business interested in sponsoring the show. And of course, following me on Instagram and TikTok for daily planty silliness, musings, and tips is always recommended. You can find me across socials at Growing Joy with Maria. Thank you again so much for listening. It is truly my honor and life's delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy. Ah.